Hey everybody, this is a tutorial on how to do the gas law simulation inquiry lab. This is from our good friends at FECT Colorado. Um, there is a screencast right here on top for you to click, which is what you're watching right now, in order to basically figure out how to manipulate different variables safely because gases can be really dangerous. All right, you are going to click on the link here or the one that is embedded that is going to pop up this nice little gas properties like so. Um, we are going to click on, um, well, sometimes it opens automatically, but if not, it says run now. And then you are going to click on the ideal one. Okay, we're going to, um, to play with this one. You need to do a couple of things before you can do anything, and you're going to have to remember to do this for each one of the scenarios. Okay, you have to say which ones you want to hold constant. You need to measure the width in nanometers. It defaults to 10 nanometers. There is a stopwatch that you can use, the collision counter. It defaults to 10 um, picoseconds, picoseconds. And then you can expand this to say particles, and it has the heavy and the light ones. The heavy ones are going to be here. The light ones are going to be red. So you have your blue and your red. They obviously have two different sizes. You can manually pump these in like so. You can skip ahead 50 at a time or one at a time. Um, for the light ones, you can add them in as well. Voila. And then you can change the heat of the whole thing or cool it down. You can manipulate the size of the container by making it bigger or smaller by dragging this little part right here. So you can definitely play around with it a little bit before you start doing it just so that you get comfortable. There's a lid that you can move. Oh no, they've escaped. You can shut them. Um, and when you're ready to reset, there's this reset button right down here in the bottom right hand corner. So you can reset, but when it resets, it literally resets it all the way back. So you want to click all of your uh, constants and your expansions again, and you can see how they all look um, right here. They're all, uh, I screenshotted them and put them down here for you. All right, so if you scroll down to the second page, you have a variety of scenarios, okay? So scenario A, it says add 100 heavy particles. You can pump them in, or you can literally just click 100 over here. Press the green play button on the wall collisions box. Okay, so you're gonna see that go like so. Once it's um, stabilized, it kind of pushes pause itself. If it doesn't, you can push pause. They've been making changes to the SVET simulator for the past like 10 years. So um, it's a little bit different every year, but just try your best. And you can read what all of this says. So you can click into your box. You can put a hundred heavy particles. So you have 100 particles total. The volume is going to be nanometers. So you're going to write 10.0. The temperature up here is 300 Kelvin. So you can type that in as well. Whoops, 300. That looks like I highlighted instead of um, change the text color. Sorry about that. That'll be fixed on yours. And then the pressure right here, if it's um, kind of going all over the place, you can push pause or you can just kind of estimate it. It looks like it's about 11.8. And then the number of collisions per 10 uh, picoseconds was 78. Then it says we are going to heat this up to 400 Kelvin. So you're going to ramp this up, this temperature, to get as close up here to 400 Kelvin as possible. If you go a little over, that's okay. A little under, that's all right, too. All right, so we're at 401. Good enough. We're going to push play and watch what happens over here. It's going to stop at 94. So then you would type in here that we have 100 particles. So that didn't change. The volume did not change. 
um, the temperature did, the pressure, oh, take a look at that. The pressure went up to 15.5 atmospheres. Oops, again, I did the highlight part. We don't want to highlight that. We want to change the text color. And then the number of collision, collisions are 94. So what happens to the number of wall collisions as the temperature increases? The more collisions, it uh, looks like it increased because the temperature increased. So you can say something along those lines. All right, for scenario B, you are going to reset, okay? That's that orange circle arrow at the bottom right. You can put your width and your stopwatch and your collision counter and expand your particles again. Add 50 heavy particles, okay? And then you can record the volume, the temperature and the pressure and the speed. And then you are going to reset that and then add 50 light ones. So we're going to see how mass is going to differ, all right, and what that does to your number of wall collisions. Don't forget to push the play on the wall collisions. It's really important. And it says, how do the number of collisions of the different particles compare at the same temperature? So you'll write a little sentence about that. Okay, scenario C, we're going to start to investigate your gas laws. So this is where you're going to reset. And here we are going to change our constant to, um, to a volume. Okay, so we are going to change our volume to constant. And we are going to add 150 heavy particles and 150 light particles. So that's a total of 300 particles altogether. We are going to start at 510 Kelvin. So ramp up that temperature, get as close to 510 as you can. Again, it's a little temperamental, so 506, yeah, that's good enough. You can always edit this a little bit. And you can talk about the number of collisions that you see. Pretend picoseconds here, and you can say 580. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drop this temperature down. So you're going to add some ice to it, and it's going to cool down to 175 Kelvin, which is going to be below freezing point of water. And we're going to see what happens here. Okay, and then you're going to talk about if the relationship between temperature and pressure is direct or inverse. Direct means they go in the same direction. Inverse, they go in opposite formats. For scenario D, you are going to keep the pressure constant, but reset. So you're going to keep the pressure constant. I think we might have to add our particles first. Yeah, we have to add our particles first. And then we can change the pressure to stay constant. And look at the relationship between temperature and volume. For scenario E, you are going to hold the temperature constant. Okay. And you're going to check out your number of collisions. Talk about that relationship in there. Uh, for scenario F, you are going to add 500. So you're really going to ramp up how many heavy particles you have in there. You're going to see what happens to the collision counter as you um, as you have those 500 go along. And you are going to add a thousand and see what happens to the particles and the number of collisions the more that you have. I hope it's a very obvious thing. For G, you are going to reset this. Have nothing constant. It tells you which ones to keep constant and when. And you're going to begin with 50 heavy and 50 light. And you are going to try to blow this lid off. So do what you can. Are you going to move the, the volume? Are you going to cool it down? Are you going to heat it up? You're going to tell me how you can change and get that lid to blow off, to have that pressure go up so much that it is going to blow up. Okay, so this is our simulator for a safe wave.
So for a constant, um, for scenario H, you're going to start with just one heavy one, and you are going to try to remove the heat and see what happens as you remove the heat, as you cool it down. All right, and then what temperature do you think you will have to get this to in order to get it to stop? And try that. Okay, scenario I, you're gonna come down here to the energy one. So it looks similar, but you have to expand some other particles. You're gonna have, you're gonna see the speed and the kinetic energy. You can open all of those up so you can see what goes on. And you are going to start with your 50 heavy and then your 50 light. So you have your 50 heavy and you'll um, take those readings. Then you'll reset it and do the 50 light ones. And you can reset it and then do 50 heavy and 50 light all together for a total of 100. See how that plays out. And then you will do the same thing here, but change your your temperatures, and you'll see how you how you'll get them all to work out. And then, last but not least, I want you to try to see what you've learned from this lab. Okay, um, what's directly proportional to one another, what's inversely proportional to one another, and if you don't remember, direct and inverse. Um, direct means when one goes up, the other goes up. Inverse, when one goes down, the other goes down. And then if you have some time, um, check out the explore one. Um, check out the diffusion one. I think the diffusion one is a lot of fun to play with. My kids really like playing with it because you can change the size of your particles, um, how much mass they have, and you can make them really big and fat. Um, and you can make them um, have like a really big radius. You can see them actually increase in size and you can change our temperatures. It's really cool. And we'll talk about it a little bit when we get to uh, Graham's law of diffusion. So if you have any questions, you can leave me comments, email me or come to office hours. Good luck with your lab. Bye.